Hey there, Village Church. Vicki Basinger here, and I am sitting with Pastor Alex and Pastor Michael, and we are in another episode of Sermon Q&A. And today we're talking through some questions that came from the sermon from yesterday, June 27th, 2021, where we talked about practical evangelism for a confused world. So today we're talking about a really important question and kind of confusing for a lot of people. Why are there false conversions? And I think that question is wonderful because we believe in a gospel that is powerful enough to save mm-hmm. people. And mm-hmm. when you see somebody who has appeared to trust in Christ and then falls away and actually yeah. rejects Jesus, it makes you wonder, is there something wrong with the gospel? Right. Is there mm-hmm. something wrong with that person? So Alex, you and I spent a little bit of time working yeah. through this. And I think it was very helpful because we talked about a major indicator of false conversions yes. and a major indicator of true conversions. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll go and start with the false conversions. Um, we identified that false conversions are primarily, typically, usually always identifiable because they're motivated by either one fear, mm-hmm. might be fear of a person, need for approval, different things kind of in the fear spectrum. Fear of hell. Yeah. Fear of fear hell. Of hell. Yeah. Oh, goodness, <laughs> yeah. yes. yes. Um, or they're motivated by the desire to get something. So like mm. the prosperity mm-hmm. gospel, I come to Jesus because I want um, health or wealth or I have a problem, I have debt, God fix my mm, debt if gotcha. I come to you. And right. so God's kind of like a genie. So what is, if that's the evidence of false conversions, what did we identify as true? Evidence of a true conversion. Well, uh, so uh, in the gospel of John, uh, Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit, says the Holy Spirit uh, will bring conviction of mm. sin. Like that's one of his functions. Mm. And and so w- the reality is conviction of sin becomes like we experience brokenness over mm. our own sin. We see the goodness of God and the mm. gospel that he would send Jesus, that he would create everything. And we, we recognize who we are. And so one of the evidences of true conversion is that like prior to coming to Jesus, you recognize how broken you actually actually Mm -hmm. are, Mm -hmm. because it's in that place that you recognize your need. All of those uh, other motivations have some other kind of need that they're emphasizing, right? Uh, So so prosperity, it's like, I don't have enough wealth, right? Mm -hmm. So so I would be inclined to come to Jesus for that. But the reality is we come to Jesus when we recognize the extent of our brokenness. And and so the result is, it's always the power of God that Mm -hmm. is bringing about conversion. So, So we come to God and recognize that we have nothing yeah. and that he has the power to save us. Yep. It's easy yeah. to get like a kid to believe in the propositional facts of the gospel. Yes, absolutely. But how do I know like if my 10 year old, 15 year old, 18 year old, six year old really has actually trusted in Christ, it's not primarily gonna be fear. Yep. It's not primarily gonna be bonus motivated. Uh, mm-hmm. I wanna know, uh, are you broken over mm-hmm. your sins? Yes. Yeah. Are you sorry before God for your sin? I think that brokenness is just right. perfect. That's what it comes down to. And are you not just saying that you're right. sorry, but yes. are you experiencing are you, yes. that? Like you're I've sorry. got one child who says they're sorry even when they're not sorry, <laughs> right. just because they're like, "Are you okay?" You <laughs> right, know? And, right. and that's that's not a great motivator yeah. for salvation. But look for brokenness. I think that's mm-hmm. I think that's really awesome. Mm-hmm. All right. So how does this happen? Um, well, you and I came up with four big reasons. Yes. And uh, the first one that that we came up with is. Like people convert falsely because some people are really good talkers. Mm. There are some people <laughs> who can move a room. Oh my goodness. They can so make true. you feel feels. Yes. And you're sitting there yeah. like, why do I, I don't even know this person. I don't even agree with what they're saying. And all of a sudden my heart but I want to move. Like, yeah, like, like, yeah. I do what they tell me to do. I'll come to Christ. <laughs> sure. <laughs> if I don't, I mean, I have to. And then they leave and they're like, what did I just yeah. do? Yeah. You know, so that'd be. Yeah. It's classic. You know, uh, when I was in high school, I saw this all the time, especially like at youth conferences mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Uh, you get a band who can play really emotional music. They know how to make things build. And then the speaker gets up and said, who wants to come to Christ? Come up here to the front. And like the whole room <laughs> flocks to the front. And you got to go like. Some of those mm-hmm. were were false conversions, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, that's just the reality. Yeah. So uh, an, another example of how this happens: motivation was not from God, was not brokenness, mm-hmm. but comes from fear. We've talked about this yeah. a lot: fear of hell, fear of what somebody else mm-hmm. will think of me yeah. mm-hmm. if I don't do this. Right? Like I I want my teachers to love me. Yeah. I want my leaders to uh, approve of me. And my so parents. yeah, right. Yeah. My parents, yeah. right? I want them to think I'm doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to do this. Yeah. So what's another one? Yep. Uh, motivation was to please a person and not repent. Mm. If you if you haven't like caught 
we're saying the same thing over <laughs> and over again. Yeah, right. <laughs> and and it's on purpose because motivation is really important. Yes. And why you do something pretty much determines yeah. for most people whether their salvation is going to be mm. persistent and true or whether or not it's going to be contingent. So, I mean, for example, if, if I am coming to Christ because I want to please you, mm -hmm. well, that is just not going to stick. Mm. Right. That's not going to get me through pain. That's not yeah. going to get mm. me through a broken marriage and a child who passes away. You know I mean like yeah. right. that can't persist. But if my salvation is rooted in brokenness over sin, that's mm. actually something that can persist. Yeah. Um, so what's the, what's the, yeah, the last one? So the last one is they actually believed a false gospel. Yeah. Uh, so this, this happens. Uh, people attach Jesus's name to other things that the go yeah. gospel can accomplish for you. We've kind of talked about that a little bit in other mm -hmm. podcasts, but but the reality is you come to Jesus for a different motivation than yeah. what he actually has come to provide. Absolutely. Yeah. So like the prosperity gospel, which yeah. we just keep beating on yeah, all right, of our right, sermons, right? right? <laughs> well, it's so insidious and right. all, most of the other false gospels are kind of believable to a degree like oh i get that right but yep. prosperity gospel is just so selfish yeah yes. you know like i want more so i'm gonna come to jesus for mm -hmm. more and and so if you come to jesus for more um you're probably not going to experience a real conversion now do some people inevitably meet christ even <laughs> after like yeah. after coming exactly. through that right yes yeah. they do but if you believe a false gospel false gospels have no power it's exactly right and, yeah. and that was one of one of my i think major points in the sermon and i don't know where you went yeah it was one, the same thing for me yeah. yeah it was when you break down romans 1 16 the core sentence is the gospel is the power mm -hmm. and if you add to subtract from or sub substitute any aspect of it it ceases to become the no longer gospel has power. Yeah. and it no longer has power yeah. Yeah. and so if you believe in a false gospel it's no gospel. That's exactly right. And so it has no power to yep. save. And so many people fall away because they believe in a false gospel. Yeah. yeah. That's, man. Yeah. Well, thanks, you guys. Let's not do that. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I honestly yeah. learned a lot just kind of gleaning from a lot that you did in sermon prep. And I think that's one of the biggest reasons we did sermon Q&A mm. was so that our church families could see Wow, like a lot of things didn't actually get into the sermon. Otherwise, yeah, you guys so would true. be up on the pulpit for yep, two a hours. Long time, <laughs> long time. Yeah, I've got a whole so. section at the bottom of my notes. That's the cut and paste, the mm -hmm. threshing room floor, this the cutting room floor. This is what didn't make it in. Yeah. This is what did not make it in. In fact, I go back to those and I could preach sermons off of those. I believe it. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. Yeah. So, um, Pastor Michael, could yeah. you tell us what we're going to answer next time? And yep. uh, we'll go from there. All right, so next time we're going to answer the question How do I know? if someone has actually trusted in Christ. Um, like what are the evidences that I should really look for to say that is a true conversion? Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome, well, yep. we'll see you next time.